Egad, you son of a bitch! Wow. Luigi's Mansion 3 gave me some of that good suck, if you know what I mean. I wrestled with convoluted controls, tedious boss fights, and a camera that is the bane of my existence, but you know what? I didn't care. I had a blast. Oh yeah! Luigi's Mansion 3 is pretty damn good despite all the flaws it has. Easily one of the best games on the Switch and easily one of the best games of 2019. And it makes me think, how does it pull it off? Well, I think it actually has something to do with the fact that it's not a perfect game and that the few flaws make the rest of it really shine and also provides a nice level of challenge to boot. The plot of Luigi's Mansion 3, without getting too into spoilers, sees Luigi and his pals on vacation to a luxury hotel. When it turns out that hotel is full of ghosts, it's up to Luigi to capture them and save his friends. Of course, he can't do it alone. He's got the help of his adorable ghost dog, Polterpup, Professor Egad, and Egad's latest invention, Gooigi, who is the best and worst thing about this game by far. The hotel as a setting works pretty great for the most part, especially once you start climbing through the 17 floors, and each one starts to take on a theme unique to it. A lot of the later floors are a ton of fun and will throw you for a loop when you first encounter them. I'm not going to do you the disservice of spoiling them, but just know that there was a solid point of four or five floors where I kept thinking, how are they possibly going to top this? Only to say on the next floor, oh, that's how. But again, I don't want to spoil those for you, so you're going to have to deal with just watching footage of the first five floors. Another thing they nailed was the design of the boss ghosts, which are very reminiscent of the portrait ghosts from the first Luigi's Mansion, except each one is a climactic and intense fight themed around each floor. The enemy ghosts feel a touch lacking in variety, but at the same time, the four that you'll encounter the most often all fill a unique niche in the combat. You got your goobs, which are overused and all over the place, hammers, which hit like a truck and had the honor of being the first enemy to kill me. Trust me, you don't want to be stuck in an enclosed space with one of these guys. And then there's that yellow one, which I hate so much that I don't even know his name, but he throws shit at you and it makes me rage. And then there's the purple one, which is basically the mirror ghost from the first Luigi's Mansion, straight up with being purple too, and they are fucking annoying. The real fun in catching these bastards is after you suck them up a bit, you can slam them around on the ground like an angry Neanderthal, dealing tons of damage and using them to take out other ghosts at the same time. It's also very cathartic when you're dealing with an especially annoying boss, you motherfucking piece of fucking And then there's the classic Nintendo humor, full of slapsticks and pantomime, all conveyed through brilliantly animated cutscenes. I'm a sucker for that style of humor, and I had a grin on my face from the beginning to end of this game. And there's Guiji, which is the most disgusting idea for a sidekick ever. He's basically a semi-sentient goo golem that looks... Ugh, he looks icky. His big gimmick is that he slides through pipes, grates, and fences, which are all places Luigi can't go, but he's slimy and sticky, and all, all the garbage in the mansion's probably sticking to him. It has a whole extra dimension to exploration and puzzles, sure, and you'll be constantly trying to uncover new places to spew your goo and use both Luigi and Gooigi in tandem. Some puzzles later in the game require you to micromanage Luigi and Gooigi a bit too much to the point you can clearly see some parts of this game were designed with co-op in mind, but they aren't impossible, they're just a touch more difficult and tedious than they need to be. Anyone else think it's a bit weird though that Luigi just goes limp when he lets out Gooigi? Oh, I see what you guys did there. Anyway, all those factors total up to a game that is an absolute pleasure. It's a great horror game, and the scariest thing by far are the fucking controls. Luigi moves like a man who lost all his goo, let me tell you, he's sluggish and awkward. The inverted control stick takes some time to getting used to, but it's not the worst facet. Instead, aiming is a pain in the ass, because Nintendo just had to insist on awful fucking motion controls. God, I hate these things. It sucked in Breath of the Wild, it sucked in Odyssey, and it sucks here too. It worked for Wii Sports and that was it. Give it a fucking rest, Nintendo. Thankfully, motion controls are not required, per se. It just so happens that they're always on and will regularly screw with your ability to aim when you're pointing. So the vacuum itself has a tendency to lock onto things to make your life easier, easier in quotations. Most of the time it works out great, except when it doesn't and you're trying desperately to target something and Luigi decides vacuuming the fucking light fixture is simply more important. So naturally you try to redirect with the control stick. You know, that archaic piece of technology you've been conditioned to use for about over a decade now. 
Except Nintendo doesn't believe in that anymore, and you can use motion controls too. So while you're fighting the lock-on with the control stick, the motion controls start fighting against your manual aiming until you eventually lock on to something else. So you try to readjust by moving the stick, but then the motion controls kick in again and drive you fucking nuts! Alone, it isn't the worst thing, but the camera also drives me insane. It's a fixed camera that follows you, which is fine and all, except that it drove me up the wall because it always felt too fucking far away, especially in rooms that tried to use the camera to show it off. Sure, the room is pretty cool, but hey guys, I need to be able to see what the fuck I'm doing. The fixed camera also makes it somewhat difficult to gauge the vertical axis of your aiming, which I found fucking frustrating. So all the time, you're trying to adjust your aiming, and you're locking on to random shit, and motion controlling unwillingly all over the place. I found this to be the biggest pain in the ass against bosses who require you to shoot something at them. Towards the end of the game, I was begging out loud for just an extra fucking second to orient myself and aim the fucking reticule. And then when I was thinking about it, I think that's one of the best design decisions this game could have made. Because this game is pretty easy for the most part, even with all those facets working against you. Except every once in a while you're going to be put into a situation where you need to demonstrate that you've gotten a grip on and mastered these awkward fucking controls. Because if you screw up, then you might die, or have your progress reset, which is a fate worse than death sometimes. And in a way, the flaws keep you on your toes, making sure you never get too comfortable. Because there will come times where everything seems to be constantly working against you, and it's up to you to stay calm, stay focused, stay alert, in order to keep going. It actually works great for the horror theme of the game, and when you're low on health and Luigi is locked onto a bedsheet rather than a ghost, it was tense, made my heart race, and was some of the most fun I've had playing a game that came out this year. And that is why I fully maintain that Luigi's Mansion 3 absolutely sucks, but in a very good way.